service tonight. We're so glad you all took the time out of your evening to come worship with us in spirit and in truth. I just have a few announcements this evening. Uh, we'd like to welcome back Dale, Susanna, and David Mormon. Uh, congratulations to David on his gold medal. I'm proud of you, David. I'd like to remind everyone to grab a bulletin. Um, there's a lot of uh, folks who are, are sick um, that need your prayers. Um, just want everyone to know that Vernon uh, is home recovering. Um, he was in the hospital with pneumonia this week, and I think he is, he's left St. Francis. He's home recovering, so let's keep him in our prayers. Also remember Brother Joel Maddox, who's not feeling well this week. Let's keep him in our prayers as well. We need to get him well. Um, also wanted to, Jan has called Pam and let them know that uh, she is staying with Rachel and the whole family is, is ill, uh, started with the boys. Then I thank uh, Rachel and then, then Jan, so they, they're they not feeling well at that house either, so let's keep them in our prayers as well. Wanted to, to remind everyone about the Veterans Luncheon that we are having here at the building on the 13th. That will be our fellowship this month. Please play, make plans to be here. We will not be uh, having our fellowship meal on our fourth Sunday due to Thanksgiving, so our fellowship meal will will be the veterans day dinner on the 13th of november we hope to see each and every one of you here uh, in this evening's worship service uh our brother joel foster will have our song service uh, dennis strine will give our lesson uh, dennis strine will also uh, take care of the lord's supper for those who did not have an opportunity this morning uh, i will have the uh, closing prayer and uh, joel foster will open us up in prayer Bow with us, please. Our Father in heaven, we come to you once again tonight with thanksgiving for the opportunity once again to come together to 
worship you through songs, prayer, opening your word, studying your word, and the Lord's Supper for those that have not had the opportunity today. We pray that you'd be with us and pray that you would accept this worship in the spirit that is offered. Pray that each of us will take of these things, that we will be uplifted and that you will receive the glory for our worship. Father, we're so thankful for this church, the church the world over. We pray that we can continue to stand for your truth, set aside those things that are contrary to your word, proclaim your gospel to a lost and dying world. Father, we have many this evening that are in need of our prayer, that are sick, those that as John has mentioned, those that are in our bulletin, those that we may not know of, Father, you know. We pray that you would lay their, your healing hand upon them, restore them to a good measure of health. <coughs> we pray that you'd be with those that are treating them, that they will do the things that are most needful to, to bring that restoration of health and pray for comfort during this time of sickness. Father, there are many that are in need, that are hurting. We pray that you would help us to overcome Satan, that we can stand for your truth, that your way will be the way. We pray, Father, that your, your power, your might will be glorified this world. Pray that you be with Brother Dennis tonight as he brings us our message, that you will uh, bring to him clear remembrance of the things that we studied. Pray that you will give him long life in the gospel. We're so thankful for he and his family that continue to work and worship with us. We pray, Father, for those that we always mention that are in need of our prayers for our military, for our first responders. Pray that you be with our political leaders, that they will do those things that are in accordance with your will and that you will defeat them in those things that go against your <coughs> teachings. Father, we pray now that as we go into this worship service that you'll be with us. Bless us in all things, Father. We ask this in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Four one five. Four one five. <coughs> More about Jesus would I know.
about Jesus on his throne. Riches and glory all his own. Spirit of his kingdom sure increase. More of his coming, Prince of Peace. More and more about Jesus. More and more about Jesus. More of his saving fullness see. More of his love who died for me. Three, one, one. Three, one, one. I'd rather have Jesus than silver and gold. Let me start that again, please. I'd rather have Jesus than silver and gold. I'd rather be his than have riches untold. I'd rather have Jesus than houses or lands. I'd rather be led by his dear-pierced hands than to be
will be five, seven, nine. Five, seven, nine. And before Brother Dennis comes to speak to us, one, three, four. One, three, four. <clears throat> Encamped along the hills of light, ye Christian soldiers rise and press the battle ere the night shall veil the glowing skies. Against the foe in bales below, let all our strength be hurled. Faith is the victory we know that overcomes the world. Faith is the victory, faith is the victory, oh glorious victory that overcomes the world. His banner over us is love, our sword the word of God. We tread the road, the saints above, with shouts of triumph trod. By faith they like a whirlwind's breath swept on o'er every field. The faith by which they conquered death is still our shining shield. Faith is a victory, faith is a victory. Oh, glorious victory that overcomes the world. White raiment shall be given before the angels. He shall know his name confessed in heaven. Then onward from the hills of light, our hearts with love aflame will vanquish all the hosts of night in Jesus' conquering name. Back in 1942, a carrier task force was heading outside around the Solomon Islands. And in the far distance beyond the horizon, they saw smoke coming up over the ocean. It was a Japanese task force. So the commander of the task force had sent destroyer escorts to block this force from getting close to the carriers. The destroyer escorts are thin-skinned, lightly armed, and no match for cruisers and battleships. <coughs> but off they went without second thought. Many in that small group were killed Several of the boats had sunk, but they were expendable. They were the pawns on the chess piece because they allowed the carrier group to get further away so that the strategic asset would not be destroyed. Pawns on a chessboard seems very insignificant. They are the most of any on the board itself. And they are expendable. They will sacrifice themselves to protect the king.
being expendable is a justifiable sacrifice. Many who have served in the military understand what that means. But they are not sacrificed for nothing. And a lot of times, the pawn on a chess piece helps conquer the other side. But we look at Paul tonight as the expendable. He was expendable for the cause of Christ. And he accepted that. And Paul reveled in that he was expendable. He knew that eventually he would lay down his life for the cause of Christ. For he wrote in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, in verses 11 and 12, for we who live are always given over to death for Jesus' sake, so that life also of Jesus may be manifested in our mortal flesh. So death is at work in us, but life in you. Now he would go on later on in the book of 2 Corinthians, specifically chapter 12, to continue that thought in verse 15, he said, I will most gladly spend and be spent for your souls. He was willing to be sacrificed. It was a cause that was worth dying for. In Romans 9 and verse 3, he said, For I could wish that I myself were accursed and cut off from Christ for the sake of my brothers my kinsmen according to the flesh. So how many, if you were to take a poll of Christians today, how many do you think would be willing to be sacrificed to be expendable for that cause? Paul truly accepted the life of Christ. He accepted the attitudes and his desires changed, and it changed abruptly. In his letter to Philippi in Philippians chapter 3, starting in verse 7, Paul knew exactly what it means to be expendable. But whatever, whatever gain I had, I counted it loss for the sake of Christ. Indeed, I count everything as loss because of the surpassing worth of knowing Christ Jesus, my Lord. And for his sake, I have suffered loss of all things. Count them as rubbish in order that I may gain Christ and be found in him. Not having a righteousness of my own that comes from the law, but which comes through faith in Christ the righteousness from God that depends on faith, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and may share in sufferings, becoming like him in his death, that by any means possible I may attain the resurrection from the dead. Now we all understand that all scripture is inspired. But these are actually Paul's own thoughts. These were his true feelings. That he stood ready to lay down his life for Christ. And through God's word and through that sacrifice, Paul proved it by his fearless crusade. In 1 Corinthians 15, in verses 30 and 32, Paul said, Why are we in danger every hour? I protest, brothers, by my pride in you, which I have in Christ Jesus our Lord. I die every day. What do I gain? 
If humanly speaking, I fought with beasts at Ephesus. If the dead are not raised, let us eat and drink, for tomorrow we die. He would later, later write in 2 Corinthians chapter 1, in verses 8 and 9, for we do not want you to be unaware, brothers, of the affliction we experienced in Asia. For we were so utterly burdened beyond our strength that we despaired of life itself. We felt that we had received a death sentence. But that was to make us rely not on ourselves, but on God who raises the dead. How could Paul, or how could anyone, for that matter, face those kind of trials? And stay steadfast. How many of us know someone who when life got hard they quit? Not on themselves but quit on God, quit on Christ. They didn't feel that they were expendable. You see Paul realized and he knew that he was expendable. The gospel of Christ had to be proclaimed. In Acts chapter 9, at the conversion of, of Saul, when he had gone into Damascus, Jesus told Ananias at that point there that he was going to show Paul just how much Paul would have to suffer for him. And surely Paul suffered. But what do we suffer today? Do we have a door slammed in our face? Do we put up with rude people every single day? Do we have to sacrifice an hour here or an hour there on our week or our weekend? To go visit someone? Other than John and Denise, how many of us face wild animals? Yeah, the golf cart thing. Denise told me about the golf cart and the bears. How many of us have been in a riot? Or prison cell? just because we were trying to share the gospel. Is our Christian life anywhere close to what Paul's was? I'd say we got it pretty easy. Yes, we can get a door slammed in, my fa in our face, but there's another door that'll open. Can we truly say what Paul wrote in Philippians 1, verse 20, Christ will be honored in my body, whether it be by life or by death. Can we say that? He was so dedicated to his mission, to his cause, to the cause of Christ, that he told his personal friends in Acts 20, verses 22 through 24, that he, as he was going to go to Jerusalem, That he was constrained by the Spirit. That he wasn't going to know what was going to happen to him there. But he says that the Holy Spirit testifies to me in every city that imprisonment and afflictions await me. And then he says, but I do not count my life of any value, nor as precious as myself. If only I may finish my course in the ministry that I have received from the Lord Jesus to testify to the gospel of the grace of God. There's a little further over, a few chapters over in chapter 21. That the saints had tried to dissuade Paul, tried to keep him from going, and 
And that's something I think that all of us would try to do for someone who is going to take a dangerous journey, is try to persuade them not to go. They feared for Paul's safety. They loved Paul. He did a lot for them. Paul said to them in verse 13, what are you doing? Weeping and, and breaking my heart. For I'm not only ready to be imprisoned, but even to die in Jerusalem. In the name of the Lord Jesus. He was perfectly willing to die for the one that purchased his life with his death. Jesus Christ. We don't have any biblical evidence of Paul's execution. There are some writings that talk about a couple of the apostles and their execution, but nothing in the Bible. For sadly, the book of Acts ends. And it doesn't continue on. But we can picture Paul with everything that he has done up to this point of not being hysterical when he was led to the execution. We can see that there was no hysterics in 2 Timothy 4 and verses 6 through 8. For I am now ready to be offered. The time of my departure is at hand. I fought the good fight. I finished the course. I kept the faith. Henceforth there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me that that day, and not only for me, but for all those who love his appearing. Facing death, and yet he can look beyond, beyond the altar of God's service and look forward to the other side. In 2 Corinthians 5 and verse 1, he knew something that made everything worthwhile. For we know that if our earthly house of this world be dissolved, we have a building of God, a house not made with hands, but eternal in the heavens. How many times do we forget that? We spend our life trying to keep our feet on the ground, our shoulder to the wheel, our nose to the grindstone. And sadly, when we look down, all we see are our dirty feet. We never look beyond, above and beyond the stars. Wouldn't it be nice as if God would just give us a glimpse? what heaven truly looks like. And where would I hope lie? It wasn't difficult for Paul to face death. For death had taken place a lot earlier. I am crucified with Christ, that Paul writes in Galatians 2 and verse 20. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I, but Christ who lives in me. In the life I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. You know, Paul realized that all Paul was going to lose at the end was a body. That's all he was going to lose. And that body didn't matter a whole lot to him. It's what held he held in his heart. We've been crucified with Christ when we realize that our lives are also expendable. We will be able to view 
with that calm detachment, the trials and the problems that we all face. There will be a day. We don't know when that day will come, but there will be a day when peace will be restored. We can have peace today by realizing that we are expendable and that we will gladly give to him whatever he gave to us. If you are not a child of God tonight, we want to give you the opportunity to make and take that great step. Of all the things that you can do in your life, that is by far the greatest. Give yourself that opportunity of eternal life. Through baptism, repentance, and confession, through these things you can have that hope of eternal life. But no, you must be willing to be expendable. If you are a child of God and you need prayers of the congregation and you need to make things right with God, won't you come as together we stand and we sing. I have a song I'd love to sing since I have been redeemed of my Redeemer and Savior King since I for those who deny the opportunity to come forward this time, you'll be served. One of the most precious privileges we have is to be able to gather around this memorial feast and this table, to be able to share and to remember what it truly cost for us to gain our freedom. It's not always the strong, the 
It's not always the brave that saves, but it is oftentimes the meek and lowly that does the most good. And while Jesus was meek and lowly, he was also strong and brave in the faith and the love that he had for his Father. So as we share these emblems this evening, let us focus and direct our hearts on that sacrifice. Will you bow with me now as we give the blessing to the bread? Our Father in heaven, we, we thank you so much for the grace that you have given all of mankind, the love that you have for us in sending your Son here on this earth to show us what life is truly supposed to be. But also, and most importantly, Lord, is the sacrifice that he gave and his resurrection. But we ask your blessings now on this bread that represents the body of your son. And as we partake of it, let us focus and draw our attention completely on that sacrifice. And we're just so grateful for it. And we thank you so much. In your son Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let us continue in prayer. Our Father in heaven, we ask your blessings on this fruit of the vine that represents the blood of your Son, the blood that was shed for the sins of this world. And while we realize, Lord, that at the time of your Son's death, when he was taking all those sins on, that you had to turn your back at that moment in time and forsake your Son. We're just so grateful, Lord, that you have that kind of love for us and also the love that your son had who was willing to give that life for us. We ask these things in your son Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Leave the basket on the table for those who not had the opportunity to give this morning. Bow with me, please. Our Father in heaven, we thank you so much for all of the things that you have allowed us to take care of in this life that we live. These blessings, Lord, have, have helped us with our comfort. It's helped us to feed our bodies, to do the tasks that we face each and every day. So now, Lord, we take this moment in time on this first day of the week to give back that which you have blessed us with and, and put in our care. We pray, Lord, that those things that we collect this day, that it will be used in a manner that will glorify you in heaven and your Son and glorify this church the world over. For it is that church that is your body, and that we are parts of. We thank you so much, and we ask these things in your Son, Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Is there anything further before we may have forgotten to mention? Oh, I did forget to mention one thing, or wasn't mentioned today. Kaylin was a homecoming queen last, yesterday. <laughs> I, there she's done here. Mm -hmm. But she's got the crown to prove it. <laughs> so... It was, it was a great time, cold time, but it was a great time. If there's nothing further, we'll stand. We'll be dismissed with prayer. Oh, Pam, I'm sorry. Heather has reminded me that next Saturday is our time change. Yes. Please turn your clocks back an hour. next. I wish they'd just leave it alone, but I sure would like the sun up before quarter to eight in the morning, though. So if you please stand, we'll be dismissed with prayer. Let's pray. Father in heaven. 
come in prayer, Father, as we come to the close of this evening's worship service with joy in our hearts, praising your high and holy name. Thankful again, Father, for this beautiful Lord's Day and these opportunities that we have had to come out and worship you in spirit and in truth. Gather around thy table to remember the sacrifice that Jesus has given to all. Thankful, Father, today for Brother Dennis and the messages that he has delivered. Pray, Father, that we would all continue to open and study from your word and that we continue to gain the knowledge we need to, to walk on this earth and to be the best we can be. Pray that we would continue to be the example that we're expected to be, that our light would continue to shine, shine so bright that others could see Jesus living within us. We're thankful, Father, for this church that meets here in Malden, and we pray tonight, Father, that the truth will always be taught here. We pray, Father, at this time for all of those of our number who weren't able to be here tonight. We have a lot that are out sick. Father, we lift them up to you tonight. Pray that they would regain their strength and health and be back with us. Pray, Father, also tonight for those who may be spiritually sick. We pray that, pray that they would change the error of their ways, Father. Come to your fold. We just also pray, Father, at this time for this great country we live in. We know there's a lot of division, Father. We know there's a vote coming up. We just pray that Pray that you will put those who you see fit in power and that, and that we as your children would always stand for the truth and, and always, always always vote for the laws that, that are in accordance with your word. We do pray, Father, as we leave this place of worship tonight that, that we would continue to study and that we would, that we would continue to put you first in our life and that... <coughs> that you go with us as we go to our homes and, our, and to our jobs this week. Father, we also pray that, that, that you forgive us of our many sins. Bring us back to the next point in time. This prayer we ask tonight is in the loving name of Christ. Amen. 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 